Hello and welcome back to Babington Europe podcast. I'm Mark Phelan for uh, Babington Europe, of course, and with me today is uh, Rajiv Usuf, number one in England, of course, and the reigning European champion. And uh, Rajiv, thank you very much for joining us here. No problem. Uh, you know, I mentioned it, European champion, so let's start off talking a little bit about that European championship win uh, last, last year in Kolding in Denmark. Um, is it fair to say a kind of a monkey off the back, Rajiv, something you've been hunting for a while and uh, everything clicked that week? Yeah, I think so. I think it's, it's probably fair to say that, I mean, going into the tournament, I think I, I mean, with Jan not playing, him being injured, uh, unfortunately, and uh, also, you know, some of the other players, you know, I'd had good records against them. Obviously, Victor was a heavy favourite. Um, but like you said, the way the week panned out, I mean, I was... I was sort of on the cusp of losing to Hans Christian, um, but you know we always have tight matches and they managed to come through that one. And then, yeah, when I seen Anders uh, beat Victor, you know, I thought potentially it could be a could be a good chance. Obviously, I knew Anders was playing very well, but yeah, on the Sunday everything everything kind of clicked for me, and yeah, just you know really really thrilled to to be the, to win this tournament. In that final, uh, was experience a key factor, young <laughs> Anders? Maybe choked a little bit, uh, and you cool as a cucumber as always, Raj, took the title. Uh, yeah, potentially, I think uh, it was a bit of a, you know, a very up and down game, really. Mm. It was, you know, I was two points up, he was two points up, and then obviously the crowd with him, it being in Denmark, maybe the occasion got to him a little bit, but, you know, he, he'll definitely be back. You know, mm. he's, he's got so much time on his side. Uh, maybe it was just my time to win, you know, and luckily for me, I, I took those chances and I managed to win because I didn't really fancy going to three sets. <laughs> You mentioned the game against uh, Hans Christian, and wow, that was a pivotal game, and he's probably yeah. still thinking about that and having nightmares. Yeah. Uh, after coming through that one, uh, did you kind of wake, go to bed that night thinking, you know what, you know, the luck is on my side this time? Uh, to be honest, I just went to bed thinking, <laughs> I'm really tired. So, uh, just slept very well. Uh, now, I mean, I think actually the last three years I've played him in the Europeans, mm. you know, just weirdly enough. Um, and yeah, I think after that game, I just, you know, we always have battles, you know, what a competitor he is. Yeah. Everyone knows that. And it was a, it was another tough game for us. But yeah, I think it just gave me a little bit more belief. Mm -hmm. um, and then sort of warming up for the game on Sunday, I just thought, you know what, I've got a very good chance today. Let's just give it everything. And, you know, for me, that, that really worked out well. You spoke about Hans Christian and you mentioned Jan there and yourself. You know, you're, you're the, the older guys in yeah. terms of European Babington men's singles, but you guys are still there and you're still, uh, you know, uh, at the top end of the world rankings, uh, but it, does it get harder, Rajiv? You know, waking up every day, going training, and uh, it, you know, does the body have a chat with you sometimes and go, you know, what the hell is going on here? Yeah, definitely, my <laughs> body. I think it's definitely had a, a few chats with me over the last couple of months. Um, now, I mean, I've been very lucky with my body mm. ge in general. Like, I've not had too many uh, bad injuries, so you know, I had a little sort of uh, Achilles issue at the end of last year, and it still niggles. It still niggles every now and again. You know, it's. I think it's just, you know, getting to that age. I've been playing, you know, badminton full time for over 10 years now. And I guess the other two guys, you know, Jan and Hans Christian, they can probably tell you the same as well. It does take its toll. Um, but like while I'm still playing well, uh, I think I'm just going to, you know, give it everything. And mm -hmm. I think that sort of attitude in the last couple of years, it's served me quite well. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think if you look at the men's singles draw in most competitions, you know, everyone can kind of be everyone. And it's, it's, a difficult, it's a difficult event to be in and it's difficult event physically. So... Yeah, you need to take each game as it comes and, you know, really focus on that one game. Everyone has their character on court and uh, you're no different. And you're seen as this kind of cool, calm and collected. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the, sometimes there's not that much emotion uh, on court. Uh, is there ever a time where you wish, you know, you'd drop down to the knees and, and rip the <laughs> shirt off? Uh, I, don't know, I just don't know if that's, I don't know if that's anywhere in me. I think if I ever won the Olympics, potentially, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did see, I saw Chen Long when he won the Olympics. He was like taking his shirt off and it, like sort of faint into take his uh, shorts off as well. You know, I thought that was quite funny. But yeah, I think just, you know, sometimes it, emotion just takes over. Like when I won the Europeans, I think I just sort of let out a big shout. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just the kind of emotion that I have. Because I do keep it like bottled up inside. I don't really want anyone to know what I'm thinking. So yeah, sometimes it just comes out of you. And yeah, I think... Uh, I think it, it maybe, you know, occasionally people do think, oh, maybe you should show more emotion or something like that. But I just, I think it's natural for me just to be how I am. So yeah. I've just kind of learned to live with it and hopefully others can as well. The calm demeanor has served you well. Uh, yeah, definitely. And it can serve you well in crucial points and matches. Yeah, I think that's, that's kind of what, what I wanted to use it for. Like, if I don't show too much emotion in a sort of positive way, then mm. people can't sort of use that against me either. 
um, when it's going negatively for me, they just don't know how I'm feeling. So yeah, it's kind of a kind of a chess match, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, we've had all the financial troubles in badminton England, and it it, it, it was a a real uh, time of ad of of adversity for all you guys, especially you know the guys at the top, Adrian, uh, trying to sort it all out from. Yeah. Uh, uh, logistics end, the financial end, you guys having to deal with the, the, the drastic drop in funding, some players being cut, some staying on. And, uh, but, you know, looking back on that time when that funding announcement uh, hit the news, you know, it's what, 18 months ago, whatever it is yeah. now. And uh, since that, I certainly noticed it, and uh, you're European champion. I've seen uh, Toby Penty go and win a few uh, circuit tournaments. I've seen good performances from across the board from the English players. Yeah. Uh, have they grown uh, in the face of adversity? Yeah, I think, you know, it's kind of a back against the wall situation. Mm. You know, you come out sort of swinging, really. Yeah. I think everyone sort of in Bam Singer thought we were hard done by. Um, obviously, with Marcus and, and Chris mm -hmm. doing so well at the Olympics, and you know everyone's heard the, the story obviously numerous times. But yeah. I just think you know people just sort of kind of knuckled down. Um, it was obviously a dark time when you know p your friends are getting cut from funding, mm -hmm. and you know they're not really sure what they want to do. Like, no one really wants to see that. But you know, like you said before, I've been playing for such a long time that I've seen that, and f it's tough to put that out of your mind. But sometimes you can use that as a bit of motivation. I think. Mm -hmm. And like you said, there's, it's not just one or two players, it's kind of everyone. They've, you know, they've stepped up their game. You know, the younger ones, Ben, Sean, mm. Jess Pugh, you know, they've, they've upped their game. Tom and Briggs won, uh, won in Canada. Mm. Uh, Toby, like you said, he's won. Um, Chris and Gabby, obviously, with their, you know, their medals and, yeah. and performances and stuff. And I think everyone's just kind of up their game. And I think when you, d when you lose that bit of money, it kind of means more when you're sort of either spending your own money from your own pocket or, you know, people are struggling to support you. So... I think it does mean that much more and you know we were very lucky with the amount of funding that we got for however many years but I think now it's really time that people who really want it and I use Toby as an example because he got cut fully from funding and basically everything out of his own pocket he did he's driving you know all around England you know getting to and from training he has to pay for his own physio you know I know these are things that everyone else has to do but in England I kind of think we take that for granted a little yeah. bit and uh, yeah, he's he's really shown like how he can play and how he can perform, and uh, he's actually back on funding now. So it's okay. you know, so a credit to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In some cases, you know, uh, it was almost like a silver spoon uh, situation where, yeah. you know, in all walks of life, we can take things for granted at sometimes. Mm -hmm. But uh, you guys have certainly shown uh, what it takes uh, to achieve and uh, keep going, and it really is. Uh, a lesson for for us all. We saw it in the, in, in the Netherlands. The Netherlands. Yeah. We saw the players who still wanted it. Yeah. And they're the ones that the cream uh, rose to the top, and we're yeah, seeing yeah. it again in England. Uh, English badminton, Raj. Uh, you know, and we're always comparing. Every country is always comparing themselves to Denmark. Yeah. And uh, everyone always talks about the club system in Denmark. Uh, you're currently playing in France. I know that because yeah. of the demise of the English league. Uh, would you like to see that league come back or uh, what is your opinion on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoyed playing in the English League, obviously, you know, mm. not having to travel too far, but also mm. the, the fans in England getting to watch good level playing, mm. uh, good level players mm. and, you know, foreign players coming over. I think we weren't really sure how it would attract or what level of players it would attract, but actually, you know, we got quite a few foreigners to, mm. to come over and play. Uh, I think, you know, obviously financially it was unsustainable, but... I would definitely like to see it back, but I think, I don't know if everyone knows, but you know, there's a county system in England mm. at the moment as well. And, and I think it's, uh, unless you sort of couple it with that, with the county system, it's never really gonna work on its own okay. because there's a lot of players who just play county um, and who sort of not willing to play other things or not mm. wanting to sort of. How, how could you couple it? I think if, well, if you just, at the moment, if you, you play for a county, if you're born there, yeah. but I don't know if, you know, there's a way of opening it out that if, it doesn't matter where you're born, you kind of just sort of transfer it amongst teams. You mm -hmm. know, that might be a way, but it would need the full backing of, you know, all the counties. And I think they all get a vote each and, you know, amongst the board and stuff. So I don't really know how the ins and outs of it. But, yeah, I would definitely like to see something work. But, yeah, I think it would take a, gr a big group decision and, a, and something very drastic to, to change to, to be able to make it. But like you said, I think the Danes have set the sort of benchmark for how a club system should be run. And, you know, they've had it for such a long time that it's kind of ingrained in them that... Mm -hmm. You know, you, s you see once you've come through a club system, you either go back and coach or you go back and spar. I see it with Scott now, you know, he's mm. gone back to be a coach. So, you know, the way that they're doing it is, is really the right way. 
does it make it make you envious sometimes to see it? You know, you go to a hall in in Denmark, and you've been in many of them. Yeah. And you walk in, and it's dedicated to badminton only. Is that yeah. something w you can only dream of in England? Yeah, I mean, obviously we've got the one centre in Milton Keynes, mm. and I guess there's a couple in Milton Keynes, but yeah, I mean, obviously it being a very high profile sport in Denmark, they're going to have that much more sort of uh, everyone wanting to play badminton and needing, you know, sort of sports halls or badminton mm. specific halls and stuff like that. So yeah, it's obviously, we look over enviously at there and the facilities that they've got, you know, they can play any time of the day, whereas, mm. you know, I guess it's other people you need like players and a sort of uh, a system and a setup that you can go into, but it's just not really there in England, whereas it is in Denmark. But, you know, it's something they're trying to strive for. I think, you know, they've just, with the with the funding situation, they kind of uh, sort of ruffle things up a little mm. bit with the with how it's run now. And I think it's, you know, the the path that they've got is, is you know, it's, it's new, but it's going to take time to work. So, I mean, hopefully that's, that's going to sort of pan out well for us and our juniors. Yeah, you've also got a sniff of some funding uh, reinstated again, uh, yeah. which you've heard about in, in the recent weeks, which is a positive thing, of course. Yeah. And uh, But that, that club system, you know, th in Denmark, they have uh, the word club means a lot. Yeah. You see the likes of uh, Sorod, uh, in, in, and they've got this system where their, their top players, Mia, Blitzfeld, uh, Hans Christian is there, and... That's their life and, and their blood. Is that yeah. something that's missing, say, in, in England and in, in other countries where, you know, you have, you, you've got the club inside you. Is yeah. that an important thing that, yeah, I think that we need I, to look I at? I guess for those guys, I mean, I know Hans Christian, I think he came through that club mm. and then he moved and then he came back, mm. didn't he? So, you know, for him, it is if you grow up somewhere and, you, you know, you do feel it within you and, mm. you know, you, it means something to you to play those matches. I think sometimes when you... When you're a foreigner playing, uh, and I've definitely been guilty of it when I was younger, you know, going over to club matches, you're kind of just going through the motions. I think they really appreciate people coming over to to play and them showing, you know, that same desire that the home players are showing. Um, but also those home players, they just have it inbuilt within them. So, you know, it's difficult to sort of get that from foreign players. But I guess if you have the core of, you know, your homegrown players, you know, then that, that kind of comes and that sort of transfers to the rest mm -hmm. of the team. Looking ahead, Raj, uh, we sp we look back a lot, and uh, you always tend to look back in things w in discussions like this. Yeah. But looking <coughs> ahead in the remaining years of your career, yeah. what are the goals? Uh, for me, I'd like to try and do well at a World Championships. Mm -hmm. You know, I've last year I played pretty well, probably the best I've done last 16. But you know, uh, having a good game against Lindan. But you know, I, I would really like to push the quarters and you know try and like put myself in contention for the, the later rounds. Um, you know, we've got Commonwealth Games and Europeans coming up, you know, within a week of each other, which <laughs> is a pretty tough schedule, but it is what it is. And, you know, I, I'd like to do well at the Commonwealths and, you know, defending my European title, you know, it's, it, it sounds weird saying it, but, yeah. you know, I'll go there with and try and to not put too much pressure on myself and just go there and see what happens. Mm. Um, but, yeah, there are three big goals for me this year. And, you know, with the new advent of the, the, the World Tour, we'll just see how that goes and... Mm. You know, there's a lot more tournaments now, so there's more chances to, to do well in those uh, competitions. How well. are you dealing with the serve? You're a tall guy. Uh, yeah, I'm a tall guy. I think <laughs> for singles players at the moment, they tell me it's not too bad. Yeah, okay, okay. The umpires, but you know, you never know when you get to competition. So yeah. I guess I'll see. <laughs> you, you'll see this week yeah, for yeah. sure. <coughs> uh, at home, of course, you, you're married to Kate. We all know Kate as a, uh, yeah. as a former player. Uh, does she still play? Did she still get out socially at all to uh, tap around? Yeah, and, uh, she still plays the county, actually. Okay, she, okay. She, still she did play in the league as well. Of course, in, we're talking about league. Kate Usef, yeah. formerly Kate Robert Shaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, she used to play in the in the, the NBL. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she still plays county every now and again. And she's actually uh, coming this week to watch. So, okay. um, But, yeah, she's, she's still kind of involved. And I think she wants to stay involved because, you know, it's nice for those ex-players to try and give the juniors as well a bit of a competition and sort of a bit of a hand uh, she used to go sort of once a week to hit with the juniors okay. but I think as as uh, as she spent more time away from the court it got a little bit harder to <laughs> to recover that's what she tells me so I'm not looking forward to that part of my life <laughs> a singles player of course Caden her day and then yeah. uh, transitioned to doubles yeah, yeah. in the latter years Rajiv we'll wrap it up and uh, all I can say is thank you very much for joining us here at our Babington Europe podcast of course the word on the street is that yourself and Toby Penty are thinking about uh putting together a podcast after yeah. joining us here. Is that something that uh, you'll still push ahead with? Uh, yeah, I mean, I hope so. It's, it was just a sort of a thought in our, mm. in our minds. We, would like, we both love badminton uh, and we both like talking about badminton and watching badminton. Mm. So 
we thought we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, we'll just have to see what the feedback is. If we get bad feedback, then we'll probably yeah. just have to call it well, a day. Well, you know, I think if it's with Toby, it's going to be funny. Yeah, uh, yeah, we've got that on our side. Yeah, <laughs> and we need a bit of that in, in the sport also. And uh, if it happens, let us know, and we'd love to publicise it and, yeah. and, and, and get it out there. But Rajiv, thanks, thanks. for joining us here. Remember uh, to follow us in Babington Europe on all our social media channels, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and hit the subscribe button on uh, YouTube. Uh, once again, Rajiv, thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.